Hi, my name is Roger and welcome to episode 6 of How to Write a Song. Today we're going to mix the song we have written and in the next episode I want to show you how we can take this song to different places, different styles, different genres. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. Ring that bell also. Actually, we're not going to mix it. The video would be extremely long if we would mix this from scratch. I have already mixed it, but I will show you a little bit of what I've done. So let's start mix this a little bit. We are starting here. That is just the plain recording without any processing. I want to start with the drums. Here are my drums in the mixer. The only thing I did to them was that I triggered the kick drum with a couple of sampler instruments just to keep it steady because I played the kick drum with a rather big range in dynamics. So let's listen to the overhead without any processing on the chorus and it sounds like this. And with the kick drum. And with the snare drum. Let's uh, put some processing in on this. On the kick drum, I flipped the phase on the kick in because uh, it was out of phase with the overheads. And then I used some expansion, EQ, and a little bit of EQ on the kick bus as well. On the snare drum, I used some expansion on the snare top mic and a little bit of EQ. I flipped the face on the bottom mic. Some EQ for top and bottom end boost on the snare bus and also some compression from this SSL channel because I like the SSL compressor on drums. I don't like it on anything else, but on drums I like it. And the overheads, just a little bit of EQ, dipping the low mids and uh, high pass filter. And now it sounds like this. Uh, the Hyatt and Toms are nothing interesting, just some adjustment with EQ and nothing else. Also a gate on the Toms. Uh, but I have, yo, this channel, this track, that was the creative mic I had inside of my drum kit, if you remember from my former video. I didn't even use it in the mix. I didn't need it, so that's not on. But the room mics are pretty cool. The room mics by themselves without processing sound like this. And with a bit of compression and a little bit of EQ, they sound like this. I also have a fake room track. And that is Universal Audio's Ocean Way Studio. I have an EQ before it just to get rid of frequencies I don't want into the reverb. And I have some compression and a little bit of EQ after the Ocean Way. And that sounds like this. On my drum bus, I only have a little bit of EQ, just a little bit of top end, just taking out a tiny little bit of low mids. That's about it. And a little bit of distortion also. Uh, let's listen to the drums, to the drums without the room mics first. They sound like this. And the same thing with the room mics. You can hear that the room mics really glue the drums together. I also have some parallel buzzes on my drums. I will go through them quickly. I have a kick and snare parallel. That's only for the kick and... Uh, snare, two compressors in a row. Blended in, it actually helps with the groove. I also have a drum compressor for all the drums, all, the whole drum kit. Sounds like this. Rather aggressive compression and it's only blended in a little bit. The same with the distortion.
And the distortion and the parallel compressor for the drums, they are automated, so they are only in in the chorus and not in the verse. So the whole drum kit sounds like this now. My aim for this mix is that I want both dirty sounds and glimmering, shiny, slick sounds combined into one song. So that's what I'm aiming for. And don't interfere with the melody and don't interfere with the groove. That's my thing with this mix. Uh, the bass. I just recorded a DI bass just straight into the computer. It sounds like this. <laughs> And then I put a software amplifier on it. And then I wanted some more dirt, so I put a distortion. I copied the track, copied the DI track to another track and then put a distortion on that. It's not high in volume, but together they sound like this. An EQ, compression, and this uh, tape simulator studio thing from Universal Audio. I love this one. Uh, a little more EQ and then a compressor with a sidechain from the kick drum. So the bass dips a little bit every time the kick drum hits, just to let the kick drum through. Don't interfere with the groove, as I said before. Now the bass sounds like this. That's cool. I won't go through all the guitars, but I will show you a couple of things. This uh, guitar melody thing, a software amplifier, then a compressor, then a mono delay, and then a stereo delay. So without the delays, it sounds like this. And with the delay, so two delays, in a row doing different things and then i have a tiny little bit of reverb on it and so on the distorted guitar could be interesting as well uh, it sounds like this i just put this stereo expansion thing on it so a little so it makes it a little more stereo like that the percussion. On the chorus, there's some claps, tambourine, and a cowbell. Uh, the claps are from Hand Clap Studio, a plugin I have made a video about. You can check it on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Um, a little bit of processing on that, EQ, limiter, things like that, and a bit of reverb. Uh, also, the tambourines, only some EQ. And uh, on the cowbell, nothing. And it sounds like this. But the tambourine and the shaker also have a little bit of this parallel bus with an apex on it, an exciter on parallel for the percussion to make them pop. And a little bit of room reverb. I made a loop and uh, it sounds like this by itself. That will take up too much space, so I did it a bit dirtier and thinner and now it sounds like this. And combined with an 808 bass drum, uh, just on the quarter notes, like four on the floor. And together they sound like this. So where are we now? Now we're here. Yeah, time for some vocals. We do some vocals now and uh, the lead vocal I split into two tracks because I sang in a low register and rather soft in the verse and I had to push myself a little bit in the chorus. So instead of automating a lot of things, 
I just split them into two tracks so I can process them differently from each other. So the lead chorus sounds like this with no processing. Beats, I walk to beats. And here's a lot. I have an EQ, deesser, a compressor, another compressor, and a little tiny bit of distortion just to make an edge. And then it goes to my lead sub, and there I have another deesser, a little bit more, little more EQ. This sugar, I also made a video about this plugin to make the vocals shine a little bit. And now it sounds like this. Beats, I walk to beats. And I wanted this vocal to be rather compressed, so I also used my parallel compress bus for the vocal. That's an 1176 style compressor, really aggressive. And I also have this crush. Uh, I call it crush. It's a pull tech EQ with a high boost and attenuated lows into an LA2 style compressor, nearly on stun. It compresses a lot. And then a pull tech again, compensating for the first pull tech. So with all those tracks, the vocal sounds like this. Beats, I walk to beats and sang along. Like that. It sounds really processed now when you listen to it in solo, but we're not going to listen to it in solo. I have some reverbs and delays on my vocals. And a trick here, I often use an EQ before my reverb just to get rid of the lows that I don't want in my reverbs. But also often some highs to get rid of S's and things like that. I also have a de before the reverb. And then a reverb, in this case, the EMT-140 played from Universal Audio. Sounds, re sounds really good on vocals, I think. And after that, I have an EQ. This is not engaged. It doesn't do anything, but I can shape the sound of the reverb after the reverb if I want to. Now the vocal in context sounds like this. Yeah, let's go to some synthesizers and stuff like that. We have this synth brass I showed you in another video. Just a little bit of EQ and a little bit of reverb on that, nothing much. An upright piano that I processed a little bit without processing. And with rather hard compression. Like that. On the B3, the Hammond style synthesizer, I just used a tape simulator, a compressor, and then this room simulated reverb and it sounds like this. I also automated the vo volume on this. Like that. Uh, let's uh, engage let's engage all the plugins on the synthesizers and we can listen to the chorus and see how it sounds. Beats, I want to beat a singer. I have a couple of background choirs that I want to show you because they are quite interesting. One is an answer. I sang mini disc after the lead vocal have sung the word mini disc. It sounds like this without processing. I think it's only reverb. Mini -disc. Listen to that in context and you will hear why why I've done what I've done. I will show you in, in a little bit. It just takes up so much space. So I thinned it a lot. Uh, use some deessing, compression and EQ and now it sounds like this. And in context. Now it got its, its own space. I have another choir here, not so interesting. So now we have gone through the mix quickly. Uh, there's not much more to show you. I have automated a few things. There's a couple of strings that doesn't do much. Just a bit of EQ and reverb on those, nothing special. I will show you a couple of more tricks, but first, 
Have you checked out my songwriting guide that I have on my webpage? It's 15 pages of useful information if you want to write a song. And it can be yours if you just sign up for the email address. I will send you that for free. I have a couple of buses for all my instruments. This bus is a parallel compressor for the drums and the bass. All the drums, percussion and the bass combined into one compressor. In this case, I used a fashion style compression, compressor. And it sounds like this by itself. Totally useless on its own, but blended in with the original signal, it sounds like this. It actually helps with the groove. And I also have a, what I call music parallel. I didn't know what to call it. Of course, drums and bass is music too, but I didn't... I, I call it music parallel. In this case, sort of an 1176 style compressor, and it sounds like this. You can see on the needle here that it is the vocal that triggers the compression the most. That's because the lead vocal is the loudest part of these instruments. That means that it compresses when the lead vocal is singing and between the vocal it actually helps other things to push up. So it makes the song breathe. Look at this, this needle and listen again. Beats, I walk to beats, I sang along. Well, let's listen to all the instruments, all the mix, without these parallel buses, and then I will put them in after a couple of bars. Beats, I walk to beats, I sang along. And the last thing I want to show you in this mix is my master sub, my two bus, whatever you would call it. I have an EQ with a high pass filter, that's it. A uh, Pultec EQ for some low and high shelving. A mastering compressor that doesn't do much, just a tiny little bit of compression. Uh, and a fascial compress compressor that doesn't do anything. It doesn't compress anything. I just use the transformer sound of this compressor. I also actually use this studer on my two bus this time. That's something I rarely do, but this time I used it. Uh, I have an EQ with some stereo widening from an, with MS, a little bass bump in the middle, not on the sides. And then a multiband compressor and a limiter. And now it sounds like this. Beats, I want to be Maybe this wasn't a beginner video when it comes to mixing. If you want me to do more beginner tips, more elementary mixing, please tell me in the comments. If you want me to go through this mix or another mix much more thoroughly, please also tell me. I can do that, but the video is going to be much longer. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you in the next video. I use some plate reverb on this song and plate in Swedish would be plåt, plåt. Until next time, Roger that.